Hey everyone, welcome back to the Fit Science channel. Today we have a special guest who is gearing up for a software development job. Before heading into the real D, they have decided to take part in a mock interview to sharpen their skills. We will be looking into some technical questions, especially those that align with their resume. To help them prepare, let's get started. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. All of the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and computer science education. So hi Pradeep. Hi, hi Atendra. So I have your resume with me. So okay, tell me about yourself, Pradeep. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, uh, I am Pradeep Pinjal and uh, I have over four years of industry experience, uh, mainly developing a uh, Spring Boot application. And uh, at the same time, I was responsible for managing as well. So uh, my first uh, company, which was uh, tied to Every India, I uh, I joined as an associate software engineer. There I have worked uh, for four years, and uh, in that in the course duration of the four years, four years I have uh, done multiple projects. Uh, which include uh, one of the recent projects which I did was a client management system. It was uh, mainly responsible. I was mainly responsible in that project for creating and managing RESTful APIs and optimizing the system efficiency as well. My tech stack was Java, Spring Boot, MySQL as a database and uh, Spring Data JP for uh, ORM mapping uh, framework. And uh, yeah, so not only the Go designing and implementing the RESTful API. I was when uh, I have implemented multiple optimization techniques like pagination, caching, then some re code refactoration on uh, SQL side as well as my Java Java side. So uh, it kind of help our application to boost thirty percent efficiency, and uh, that was kind of achievement for me in my recent project in, in that particular project. Apart from that, there was one internal project which I did. It was e-commerce internal project. Mm -hmm. uh, the tech stack was uh, similar to my uh, previous project. It was Java, Spring Boot, and uh, MySQL. It was very basic and uh, internal project, so it was not a complex one. So I was, but, but the thing is, I was uh, not only implementing the RESTful API. I was doing uh, security testing as well for that application. So that's uh, about my tech experience. Recent up uh, after that, I, I after that I uh, plan for my uh, to I plan to improve my technical skin. So I started preparing for masters, and I recently I completed masters uh, in May 2024. And right now I am looking for a job to utilize my diverse skill set. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Great to know you. So, so I see here in resume, you have a prior knowledge on Python, Java, Angular as well. Yes. So let's, let's go through a few questions on Java. Okay, can you explain hierarchy of collection in Java? Yeah, so collection is uh, basically um, a list of interface and classes. It's a it's uh, it's contain multiple objects or multiple elements together to process to, to process so that we can uh, do manipulation or some read or write access on that the, those objects or elements. So hierarchy involved for uh, collection. The top hierarchy is uh, collection, which contain multiple interface. Collection is collection itself is an interface and uh, they have uh, multiple uh, sub interface which were which is a list then we have a map then we have a queue and we have a set so these four are uh, sub 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 interface of collection interface then in these interface we have multiple implementation for the, for example a list have a implementation in array list then uh, linked list and uh, then uh, for map we have implementation as a hash map then linked hash map is also there a, a concrete implementation of a map interface then for the set interface we have implementation as a hash set and uh, link hash set is also there 
then we have a queue 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 interface which have a concrete implementation as a, a stack and a linked list as well so uh, these are the hierarchy at, at uh, three levels okay that's great okay so um, can you distinguish between class not found exception and known class definition found address have you heard about that yeah so um, when do you class yeah so class not found exception and there is an yes. answer which is no class definition found error okay i i am familiar with the class not found exception uh, but i'm kind of vague in the no class i have seen that but i'm not recalling like why it is error uh, why it cause the exception but class not found exception usually mm -hmm. happens let's say we have a java class and you try to run it so it will generate a bytecode which is dot class file so it will save into your in one of the sub class uh, system right. like there are three sub class system bootstrap uh, bootstrap sub sub uh, sub system then there is a application and there is a uh, extension sub class like there are three sub sub system to store this dot class files so the thing is when when you run the java file and uh, you generate uh, the dot class file will generate and if i'm i'm deleting that dot class file and next time i am running the java file it will say a uh, class not found because we have deleted this dot class file so this is one of the reason to give this exception but there are other which i'm not able to recall but okay. uh, that's why so that is very very similar node class definition error I guess uh, we need to check that. Okay, so uh, what are you thinking? Let's do a simple uh, view programming. It's not really programming. Let's discuss about some concept of um, method overriding. Okay. So can you uh, show me your notepad and your code? Okay. Let's go read that. Can you open the notepad? Yeah, like, can I open any notepad? Like. Open okay. subline. I'll open subline. Yeah. Okay, so well, uh, uh, just write a class. Uh, let's say class anywhere. Class anywhere. Okay, anywhere. No, it's a public view. Something. Uh, beside let's take or a method for. Sound. Sound, not sound. Sound, sound. Okay. Oh, we can take another class. Uh, can I have a uh, like message? That's why uh, you can print that or can display that. Okay. Let's eat another class and name extend another class name and say cat cat send it. Well, this we get another bird method solve. Uh, this I did not get it. Um, what I did method. So oh, what is the method over? Okay. okay. So you can have okay, say we just read up different what okay. meow use the uh, how does cat sound meow. Okay, okay. And mm -hmm. uh, and it will can be it's fine. And uh, let's split another class. Dog. Dog. Yeah, third animal called dog. Yes, I think voice is about very odd. Uh, I think it's breaking in the middle, but yeah, sometimes it's clear. 
so this will also i will override And now let's move to main method, right? Main, uh, main method. Okay. Now, be the object. Or two camera. Anyway. Now you get the sound of cat. How did you do it? Uh, so uh, I need to um, get the sound of this cat, right? Right. So, uh, for accessing the method of this, I need I need to have an object of this class. So I have to create an object. So then I'll use it. And we can store as the cat to cat dot sound. This will print the meow. Because I am access, I'm accessing the cat method as a object. Okay, let's uh, change quick discussion. The dog mm -hmm. has sound method. It was mm -hmm. public. Let's make it productive. Mm -hmm. Now you need to uh, call the dogs. Yeah, you have to make a sound of dog. How would you do that? You are able to do that. Uh, protected. Um, I I can create the object of this dog class, but protected is only accessible for. Uh, it will not be accessible from outside of any class. I I don't think I will able able to make a sound of dog. Uh, it it can give compiler error because protected is not accessible from other any, classes. Any, any way to uh, yeah. So the definition of protected is it is only accessible inside this class and the subclass. So if I am creating a subclass which accessing the property of this dog, then I I'll be able to access it. Right. Here I am not uh, using. And the dog is the the bottom class. There is no any extension of uh, other class which is extending the dog. Dog is extending anyway. But someone, if someone will extend the dog, then that class will be able to call the sound method. Um, okay, you hope that like that. Okay. Uh, what if we make that product to private? Then it is not possible because protected will only be accessible like. Okay. So okay, let's uh, make this. Is it public? Let's change that it's... to public. Yeah. So now you will be able to make the sound of dog. Yes. Okay. How will they do that? So I'm creating an object and accessing the method. So let's trick another thing, which is in the animal. Go to the animal. Okay. What does happen if we make the sound, the method in the animal, as a private? Okay, this is as a private. Okay, if I'm able to access the private, still all this method will run because... Oh, sorry. Okay. So private will not be accessible 
and uh, so I'm making this method as a private and I am overwriting that particular method so okay this is a trigger but I I believe it can it 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 may give compiler error because uh, this is only associated with this particular class so no one can inherit as well so of okay. but no what will happen in the mean if you run that this should work as it is because they have one implementation so no. they they can print meow and bark. Do so you think that uh, sound will uh, it will call the meow and bark? It will print meow on bark, right? Anyway, I'm not hundred percent sure, but uh, I believe that can happen because uh, they have one implementation, and I am just using that particular method name and overwriting. But I have one implementation, so. Uh, that's fine. Uh, let's move on to Springs. Spring, Spring Boot. Right. You worked at Spring. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have also worked in Spring. So what is the difference in Spring and Spring Boot? Are you, which Spring version you use? Yeah, so I have used uh, a Spring multiple version starting from version 4.8 till uh, series of 4 and currently I have been, I'm using series of 5. So both both uh, words and I have experience. When we talk about the difference between a Spring and a Spring Boot, there are multiple. A spring uh, have a lot of boilerplate. We have XML configuration. We have mapping. But a Spring Boot improvises all those boilerplate. It gives a uh, smooth functionality. Like we have uh, uh, so many uh, tools as well as it provide a lot of starter dependency. And it do auto configuration. It provide a lot of it provide the server, so we don't need to worry about all those things. We only care about the logic part. We just need to write a logic, and everything will take care by the Spring Boot. So these many uh, this helps our uh, application to start as a without any uh, configuration and minimal configuration we need to do for a Spring Boot when compared to the Spring where we have to do a lot of configuration. So, uh, if you know Spring, what is the default scope of Spring? Yeah, so, default scope is a singleton scope for a Spring Boot. So, how do you design a singleton class? Yeah, so, singleton class, we have uh, multiple steps to uh, follow for designing the singleton class. And there are multiple ways as well. Uh, there is a lazy way, there is a eager way. Then uh, there is a uh, using a uh, synchronized queue or double locking. So these many multiple ways are there to implement singleton class. So just write one class. Okay. So uh, okay. So draw bed so singleton class. Singleton class. I have to design right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's say class A. This one I want to make as a singleton class. So first first thing I have to do is make the constructor private because we the main purpose of singleton class is to make only one instance for all the whole whole application. There will be no any uh, like we should not able to create a multiple object of a single class for entire application. So we need to make the constructor private. So I'll just make this as a private so no other um, class can will be able to create the object of this class. Okay. So uh, first thing I need to make as a private which is done and then uh, we need to create an object also. So uh, we need to create objects. So let's say I am using a variable a equal to uh, I'm just initializing to null so that I need to create an object of this class but only through uh, a method so I need to make this a method and this also should be a static because we are not able to create any object so it should be 
uh, accessible through class so static and uh, we are returning this object so yeah. and we just need to check if a which is reference is null then only we will be able to create so it will return uh, anyway so we are we uh, we can call this class we can call this method using class level so a dot uh, method will uh, when it will call otherwise it will not be um, only this variable will be null then only it will create the object and return it otherwise it will not be so this is this is one way to create um, single okay. class it's the same thing here so uh, in this class I can see uh, your made a uh, constructor is private okay private so what does that mean uh, making it class private okay so this private means this constructor will only be called th inside this class no other class can can call this constructor okay. because here you can see i am calling this constructor new a inside this class so you, even if it is private it can be accessible within the class okay. With other um okay so so a is a public uh access privacy buyer so you know, so if i create a class a so don't you know i i can use i can create the uh get the value of a uh the variable a uh i i think i did not so you need class a as a variable a. yes it's a reference variable which holds the object of this okay. class. So if I create a main function and create an object of A, so don't you think but I can access the A variable? Which breaks the singleton here? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, okay. So... This will also be... Yeah, correct. You are correct. This also will not uh, accessible from outside. So it should be private. And uh, final, I need to make so that it will not be once it will be created, it should be not be used to this reference to other purpose. If you make a final, that you can't change that also, right? Yeah, you can. Then, uh, okay, so let's go to the method. So when we are calling a method for method make, you work glass. So, so I will get. So what if, let's say in the first beginning, I don't have the instance of variable A. So yes. It's object of that class. So yeah. it will search where it is, it is null, then it will return the object. Then if I try to call another uh, once again, then it will again search for null. But I already have it. Right? Okay. Yes. When if, if it uh, the 90 line number 90 it says if a is equal to null null so on the second time i don't have null i have yeah. some object right now but you are checking for null and i will not get return so it will not return anything so i will not yeah so yeah yeah correct so the second time if someone will call it should not create this one but it should return whatever the object you have, like already creating. Okay. So then you are you are always returning a. Because let's say if condition false, so you you are always going to, or if even then if is true, you are always returning a. Is it that what you want to write? Uh, no, that I don't want to write. Uh, so if anyone for first time they're calling, then I will create an object and return it. But if object is already created, then... So basically, I sh uh, I'm thinking I should not return here anything. I'll just create it and save it in this. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, then I'll return it. Otherwise, if next time if it is that null, it will return whatever I have. So both time, I'm wrong. So every time, should return instance of a variable. Okay. 
Yeah, so object is only created when it is null. Otherwise, but whatever the object in this fact, you have final, right? So it will not change. You are you you are going to do that e equals to new, right? So how you will do that? Final anti change, right? Yeah, I'm thinking it should not be final because uh, if it is final, we cannot change the reference to another. So it, I, I, I believe it will be just a private because it will not be accessible from outside. Okay. So you mean this class singleton? This is a class singleton class. Yeah. So okay, let's. Uh, you, you might have known that in a singleton class is uh, to the boom When we write multi-threading, right? In one th yes. In the concept, it doesn't. It has a limitation on this. So you, uh, if there are multiple uh, threads are trying to access the same singleton, you will get. Mm -hmm new single turn classes every time in that uh, how you will change this code yeah so when we talk about uh, multiple thread like they want to access this particular method chances are there they will create uh, multiple object of this class so it will violate the singleton uh, principle so what we can do is we can uh, use uh, make this method uh, to be synchronized so that only one thread will be access uh, one thread will only be access uh, this particular method at the same time so I'll just uh, if I'll declare this method as synchronized so no multiple method will will access this method only one thread will access and if let's say one thread is coming in this method and they are creating an object so when the next time some other thread will come they will get the created object they will not be able to create a human making a method synchronized so uh, it will wait for that thread to go inside and until yes. it happens uh, when whenever a new thread is uh, trying to acquire that access that memory it will mm. uh, so one thread will try to catch that and other will wait for that move Yes, yes. Um, okay, let's move on to another question on string. So, just uh, tell me about the different annotation in spring, right? So, what are the annotation you last came across? You mean to uh, uh, like uh, what are the annotation is there in, is you in, in spring? Because you have used it. Okay. Yeah, so there are multiple annotations. One is the main annotation, which is at a Spring Boot application, which is the entry point of a Spring Boot application. It consists of three different annotations, which is component scan, enable auto configuration, and configuration. Configuration is mainly responsible for, uh, it will tell like this particular class is responsible for handling the bean and configuration for the application. Mm -hmm. um, then, there are other annotation like a stereotype annotation is there for example is uh, service annotation is there at um, repository is there mm -hmm. then at component is there then uh, other annotation involved in uh, data uh, like uh, dependency injection annotation is there which is auto add so mm -hmm. then there are other annotation which is uh, uh, pre-destroy and post-construct that is, uh, it comes when you talk about the language. What do you understand with uh, um, a direct controller uh, REST controller? Okay, so these two are also uh, annotation comes under the Spring Boot. So controller and REST controller both are responsible for handling. Like it tells the Spring Boot this class is responsible for that particular class is responsible for handling the HTTP request, right? It will be mainly responsible for handling the the request of HTTP, which client will save. The main difference between REST controller and controller is a controller is more a general, general version of handling the request. It will return a view to client 
but when you talk about the rest controller it will not send a view it will mainly uh, it send usually objects so we see the object detail like json data on um, either you can see on the using postman or directly chrome also you can see basically on the client you will see the data in the json format which is object but when you use controller there you will get uh, http uh, sorry html pages as a view or any types of view for data and so I guess we can do that same in uh, this controller also and get the consumer as a JSON as we can do that. Uh, REST controller, you you mean to say like we if we are using REST controller, we can send a view to user? Yeah, you're saying you said that uh, we only can do it uh, in, uh, in controller not in the rest control is it that you what you mean uh i'm not sure it is uh, we can do or not but if it is possible to do then uh, mainly for the uh it's a convention approach which people uses uh, to uh, use the controller as to return a view rather than return an object so Usually REST controller consists controller as well as the response body. So controller, I guess it will also be uh, like it can return a view because it is consist of controller and the response body. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and it's fine with that Spring and Java. Let's move on to a few front end question. Okay, I'm not... Uh... No, uh, mainly I have worked on the back end. Front end, I have done pair programming. So I'm not particularly involved in that. I am kind of but, exploring but you that. You know, the basic of Angular, right? Angular or, or STM. I have yeah. no idea. On that. I have used it, but not specifically like the detail. I am not familiar with that. Okay. That's fair. Um, then I will not ask question on Angular. Um, okay, you only know, know about database, that's fine with that. Database question, yes, yes, yes. My SQL, I used and SQL, I know SQL. Um, I want you to write a SQL, SQL query. Uh, what it does is, is you have to get a list of number of customers, mm -hmm. okay, by each country, okay. And then you have to order by the country, which has the most, you have to order by the country, which has the most uh, number of customers. But the you have to get the most number of customers they have, um, which has, and on that, you have to get the number of customers for each country. Do you understand this question? Or Okay, so uh, my understanding is uh, we have a table of, let's say we have a table of customers. So I need to get a list of customers. And uh, so then there are there is a country. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so means uh, there is a customer table inside that you have a country. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you also have a number of uh, uh, number of customers. It's a, another column where you get the different counts of each countries okay i guess you have id or name on those things other where columns are there so we have need to focus on the customers the customer table inside that you have a country country is a column another column is number of customers Okay, so basically, uh, let me uh, paraphrase this. If we have an ID column, then there will be other column, but there is a country column, and there, for each country, there is a number of customer. So basically, this table, I am still confused. So let's say this table have ten entry. Correct. Okay. So number of customer will be ten. I will give you an example. Right. Well, there is okay. a country called. India, India have mm -hmm. five customers. Then mm -hmm. you have uh, USA. You has say has two customers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then again you have India as one customer. Then you have uh, China as two customers. So 
what you have to do is you have to group that yeah yeah uh, okay okay so okay so there can be multiple mm-hmm. entry in that same uh, yeah yeah got, got, got it so um we uh, we are basically on selecting all the country and so from this um, from customer from customer uh, what we have to do we need to group by this country so we have a country of group of country then uh, we need to add that particular number of customer which belongs to each country so uh, we need to use uh, aggregate method here so uh, i can just use count and the uh, number of custom so it will select all the number of customer from this group but i have also one more condition which is order by this country and yes, so how uh, what i am doing is number of customer i am taking number of customer from this customer table i need to group this and then order by and count i am using so basically um i have filtered based on the group and in each group okay so so this will be not the right one because let's say we have india two two times we have india one times we have three the second time we have one so basically we need to add this so we need to add this not count we need to sum this number of customer so it will sum but in belongs to each group and uh, yeah so like this we can do we can uh, select this table and then we can uh, number of customer sorry uh, you don't need to sum the number of customers uh, you can have multiple entries of india right or any other country so you need to figure out the how many countries right how many countries are there uh, okay how many countries are there only like not yes so uh, you have to group on the country then i can just uh, do the count of this c dot country but again like i am still uh, we have a country column let's say we have three india in that column and uh, in each entry like for first india there will be three people three number of customer second india there is uh, two number of customer third is one number of customer so what should be the output like what should i return it should be output should be the you should have a country column okay yes and you should have another count as a number of customer okay which will uh, uh, get you how many numbers for that customer you have means that each country have number of customers where what can we wait how uh, let me see you ask in first yeah. course the customer you might not get well uh, is a column number of customer mean yeah 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 you need, to, you need to see the display number of customers so basically we have only uh, a country design the whole table so we do yeah yeah got it but so basically we have a column only country not number of customer right okay so i can do like this like this will give me all the count belongs to each group like india has 3 so it will so no um, based on the group like how many different country and how many 
like let's say india has total total three india so total three count will be for india like the result like india will have three count then usa will have to find like this will get yeah you're thinking right i'm just putting the uh, question here you have to also figure out the top so means you have to get yeah so basically um yeah yeah uh, okay list of number of customers by each country so this will only give me count but what about the country so see the country so this will give me a country and they count but the thing is uh we need to order by count okay so we have ordered all this then with the most customer at the top so convert So how do you get the top? So do you? Uh, so basically, uh, we let's say we have India as a three. So we need to do the decreasing order of this particular. And so we can do this. Uh, we need to do decreasing. So it will print in the decreasing order, but based on the country, not the country, based on the discount, we need to do. So. You can you can make uh alias in the called country. No, you must say so which which help you to make views in the order. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you it was me. Oh, uh, let's move on. You have prime knowledge on Docker, or you got yeah basic understanding. I have. I have How about Hibernate. Yeah, that also. I'm still uh, learning more about it because most of the time I use Spring Data JPN, but uh, Hibernate is more like a uh, uh, detailed version of that. So, so you must have used Save and Save Update method. And that is that belongs to uh, Hibernate. I in Spring Data JPM we don't have those. Okay. We directly have okay. method. So what is the difference in the how how do you save JP objects? Yeah, so we have uh, basically we need to extend a JP repository which provide a lot of implementation. We have a save method, update, delete method. So we can directly use those method. We dot save and we can provide the entity. So it will save the entity into the database. Okay. That's right. So uh, Docker, you said uh, you were not that confident, and also uh, yes. So, uh, one more spring question, I which I remember is uh, even it's very hard. It so what do you find it is when you when when do you choose to use put and patch list? Put and batch patch. Okay. So there are multiple met method, multiple method for. Yeah, yeah, there are multiple method for to get first. Okay. So use this put and patch. Okay, put 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 is mainly responsible for. Let's say we have a record which we want to update some of the information. Uh, so we can use in that kind of scenario put as well as patch. But if you want to update old record we have to use put because patch is only responsible for updating only a partial information on a particular record not the whole information so on the convention method whenever you have a small information which you want to update we can use patch not put put is for more uh, general type of updating method so in that kind of scenario there's a difference uh, which I know that put and patch. So basically, do both both do that same thing when you request. Uh, it's not in generic. We do a lot of output. We do for some certain reason for patch and put. So I'm trying to figure out what would be the reason. When should a developer choose put rather than on patch? Let's there's a scenario. The user 
double click on that same update. Oh, okay. Right. And that scenario, which request would you choose? User okay. can go, uh, okay. right. She can just click multiple times. What? How do yes. you send those kind of requests? Yeah, even user are trying to update multiple times, the result should be same. So put is first of all put is item to date. No matter the how many times we update, mm -hmm. it will give the same result. I'm not. Uh, remembering patches item put in or not but if uh, our application needed to be uh, like update only once and it will give no matter how many times user it's want it's a word which i am looking for item so uh, it's okay. yes because that's the uh, difference is to make put and patch okay so patch is not item put in i, I was not uh, recalling that but put is item put in that i'm sure fair i guess uh, i'm done with the questions i do have a lot but i guess this is fine for today's session um mm -hmm. so you have any questions uh yeah i just uh, wanted to say like for this interview like what are the in company like what will be the day-to-day -day responsibility as if i am joining so okay see the company always look for a person who can rely on Okay, let's say if they give you any certain task, you don't need to go and check that what uh, how what is the update. He will be individual a contributor to the company. If say company is trying to hire for full stack develop, he will let that developer figure out its own. Maybe through the code best, he will get the, all the access for uh, for sure that for the database access or the front end access or back end access but he need to figure out how does the functionality works he will get the business flow but he need to figure out that how does this functionality need to fix mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the initial beginning he will get definitely get the knowledge tensor but but the manager will always will be looking for that how do you figure out your own okay so that's what most of the organization looks for and yeah mm -hmm. uh, if you have some certain prior knowledge on any any language that helps mm -hmm. because let's say if if there is a react okay in the in the future instead of angular then how do you survive how do you learn that skill you need to be flexible in certain ways so are you flexible enough? Yeah, yeah. Like, so are you not stuck with Java itself or any other certain language? It can be the Django framework also are flexible enough that the books in it. Definitely. I'm eager to learn any skill which is required for the project. Okay. That wraps up our session for today. If you have got a better answer to any of the questions we discussed, Feel free to drop it in the comments. Your insight could really help out other fellow candidates. If you like this kind of content, YouTube will recommend more videos like this on your feed. I really appreciate your support and I hope to see more of you joining the community by subscribing. Your support helps my channel grow, so thank you. And remember, if you're looking to boost your confidence, before job interview or want to fine tune your resume, we offer mock interview and resume making session. Just fill out the form in the description below. You might even get featured on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe for more content like this. We will see you in the next video.